Liberty in our lifetimes in a free state of our own. That's the vision. That's the dream. And we are building it in New Hampshire. I'm Eric Brakey, your host and renegade statesman for the Porcupine Report. Welcome to your source for Porcupine news and free-range conversation on matters of liberty. All right, let's hop into the show. Hello and welcome, everyone. I am your host, your renegade statesman, executive director of the Free State Project, Eric Brakey. Glad to have you here with us this evening. Uh, this was going to be episode 12 of the Porcupine Report, um, but there's been a slight change um, on my end. It's just been far too busy of a week. This is the last week of the Maine State Senate, which means that we're in basically every single day. I'm lucky if I get out before midnight. And our great guest that we had lined up for today, I had to call and ask if we could reschedule. And we are rescheduling for uh, two weeks out. So the guest that we were going to have today, I'm going to keep their name still a mystery. It was a big guest, I'll tell you, someone we're very excited to have on. We'll be talking with this person in two weeks. And we're going to get back to our you know, regular uh, our regular episodes uh, next week. So don't think of this as episode 12. Think of this as a slight intermission in the Porcupine Report. Of course, I have promised you that I would bring you new content every single Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. If you haven't gone ahead and subscribed on your favorite podcasting app or, um, or, or just make sure to check out uh, as we post to social media on the Free State Project Facebook page and YouTube page and X page every single Wednesday at seven, a new episode. Um, make sure you're doing that. Uh, so for this episode, this is going to be a short episode. In fact, I'm coming to you from my office right now in Auburn, Maine, uh, and I'm about to dash off to the state legislature uh, for, um, well, I'm recording this Wednesday morning, which is statutory adjournment, which means it will be the last day, cross our fingers, uh, uh, of that the, that the legislature is in session, which means that in a moment, the people of Maine anyway, could breathe easy for a moment, uh, you know, that their life and their liberty is uh, no, and their property is no longer in jeopardy because boy, this, these past few years with single party Democrat control of the state of Maine, no man's life, liberty, or property has been safe. Uh, we have seen an onslaught of of so many uh, bad pieces of legislation, which in in past years would have just um, stood no chance. Uh, bills that we had defeated over and over again, from gun control measures to measures to to bind our presidential electors in the state of Maine to the national popular vote and take away Maine's unique voice in the presidential election process because uh, some of the more liberals of the state don't don't like that the folks of the northern part of the state vote a different way than they do. Well, this year, I'm sad to say, a lot of these bills are passing. A lot of um, Maine's voices being stripped away, Maine's um, uh, our freedoms, our second amendment rights are being stripped away. And I've done the best that I can to hold the line. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm sad to say that, you know, it used to be that Maine and New Hampshire, I used to joke, were in a nice healthy competition with each other for who could advance freedom the fastest. Well, uh, maybe you go back a decade ago and we were competing to be who was the first who was going to pass constitutional carry. Maine did win on that front, though New Hampshire passed a cleaner version of constitutional carry. Um, it seemed for a while that perhaps there was a nice, a nice healthy competition there. But New Hampshire has continued progressing down the road of freedom, and Maine has taken a sharp left turn down the road to progressivism. Um, and, uh, and I'm very concerned about the state that I love, the pine tree state. Ultimately, I think this is a big part of why I am passing the torch to so many liberty leaders in Maine to continue the fight in the Pine Tree State while I'm going to New Hampshire and joining the Free State Project. Um, I like to think a little bit, perhaps I'm, I'm, I'm uh, 
<laughs> preparing the way uh, for a lot of other Maine people who who may be joining us in in New Hampshire in the near future because things are getting so bad in Maine. And um, I mean, we saw this during COVID, just how how atrocious and and terrible the COVID lockdowns were. Businesses being shut down and no remorse, no no looking backwards, no asking why the um, the excess mortality rate during the COVID era for young and healthy people was so much higher um, than even the excess mortality rate for the elderly and the infirm uh, based on what you would expect in a normal year. No looking backwards at these failed policies, just moving forward down the road to tyranny. Um, I, in the main Senate, when they were taking away our our electoral college voice and binding us to the national popular vote, I gave the main Senate a warning. I said, you know, the people of the second district of Maine are, are only going to take this for so long. How much longer will people accept their voices being silenced time after time after time? Now, I know if you're watching the Porcupine Report, you're probably more interested in New Hampshire than Maine, but I do think it serves as a very good contrast. Um, you know, in over the course of the last decade in Maine, you know, one thing that's interesting about Maine is it's it's one of, as far as presidential elections, is one of only two states in, in America that splits its electoral college votes according to congressional district. Um and um, and the second district of Maine has always been historically very independent minded from the southern part of Maine. The second district is basically it's the biggest congressional district east of the Mississippi, western Maine, northern Maine, down east Maine, central Maine. And the first district is uh, small geographically, but big in terms of population density. And that's like Portland, southern Maine and the coast. And that's where kind of, frankly, I think over time, a lot of um, out of state, left of center folks, uh, oftentimes people coming in with a lot of money who are kind of detached from things. They will buy up the property along the coast. They've driven up prices of everything anyway. So these two there, it's often said in Maine that there are two mains. There's Southern Maine and then there's the rest of Maine. But Southern Maine and the coast seem, have come to politically dominate the state. Well, we have seen three attempts now to for the folks of Southern Maine to push around the people of Northern Maine. We have seen a referendum on ranked choice voting, which I know in the libertarian community, there's a lot of different uh, thoughts about ranked choice voting. But what I'll tell you is in Maine, uh, it was on, up on referendum and it passed statewide. But in the second district of Maine, if you were just to count the votes in the second district of Maine, it failed. If it, it, it did not get majority support in the second district, but there has only been one single race in the state of Maine where the outcome has been changed by ranked choice voting. And that was the second district congressional race in 2000, uh, in 2018. So immediately after ranked choice voting went into effect, the second district lost its Republican congressman and had a Democratic congressman installed who is still there today. Um, again, under rules that the second district voted against, but the first district pushed upon them. So um, a lot of folks felt very disenfranchised by that. I, I think understandably, regardless of how you feel about ranked choice voting, uh, you know, I think you might be feel frustrated too if your representation was swapped out based on rules that you did not agree to. So that was the first strike. Then, of course, the second district of Maine has voted for Donald Trump twice, uh, while the first district of Maine has gone overwhelmingly for uh, Democratic candidates, Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden. Um, well, we saw recently that the main secretary of state, Shenna Bellows, who, frankly, I'll say Shenna Bellows is someone who I, I know I've worked with over the years. We served in the main state Senate together before she was secretary of state. She was the former state director for the ACLU. I'd always regarded her as um, somewhat of an ally on civil liberties issues. Um, but I, I do seem to have seen her over the years kind of drift more and more um, away from what I thought were her kind of her 
a nonpartisan roots to kind of a a, a uh, democratic partisanship that I think can be ugly. Um, uh, and I think it was very ugly when she attempted to kick Donald Trump off of the ballot in the state of Maine. And of course, in the second district of Maine, <laughs> they just had, uh, you know, their congressmen swapped out. They have the, now you've got the secretary of state trying to tell them that they can't uh, they can't vote for the the candidate that they voted for twice now. Thankfully, the U.S. Supreme Court threw that out. But now you have the national popular vote being pushed upon the people of Maine from the first district, largely rejected by people in the second district because it robs the second district of their unique voice, creates a situation where big munis big cities, big population centers like New York City and Chicago and Los Angeles are going to have more say over how our electoral votes in Maine are cast than 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 the people actually in the state in the state would. And certainly it strips away the unique voice of the people of the second district. So I asked the Senate, how much longer are the people of the second district going to accept this, being kicked around like this, before we start to look at the example of taking place in states like Idaho and Oregon, right? In Oregon right now, they have a Portland, Oregon, as I'm sure you're aware, just like Maine has a Portland, Maine, that is politically dominating the state and pushing progressive politics. And the people of Eastern Oregon have formed what is being called the Greater Idaho Movement. And that entire counties of that state are trying to break away and join Idaho, where they feel like they will have a, a voice that is better respected than what is taking place in their state. And I caution the Senate. How much longer until the people of the second district of Maine are talking about a greater New Hampshire movement in the same respect that the folks of Eastern Oregon are talking about a greater Idaho movement? I mean, let's be clear. The, uh, New Hampshire's right there. It's right across the border. It even shares a border with the second district of Maine through Oxford County, Maine. So who knows? I'm sure to some that sounds ridiculous. These borders never change, right? They've been set in stone as if from God on high. But I wonder how much longer people will take of this state that is increasingly to shift towards single party rule that completely disregards the, the, the rights, the freedoms, the voice of uh, the minority living in the rural parts of the state. And frankly, I think if the second district ever did decide to want to join New Hampshire and New Hampshire were to extend that invitation, I think that for those in New Hampshire who are very concerned about uh, the 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 uh, mass holization of New Hampshire, of folks from Massachusetts coming up to New Hampshire and bringing their bringing their uh, political progressive politics from New Hampshire, I think that's a real concern. Of course. We're not talking about the free staters who are fleeing, New, uh, fleeing, fleeing Massachusetts in pursuit of freedom, right? We're not talking about those folks. Those folks are welcome. But, uh, but uh, what I am saying is if folks are concerned about this, man, if you could bring in territories from, from northern Maine uh, and western Maine uh, and the second district of Maine, if you could bring that in New Hampshire, talk about reinforcements to ensure that New Hampshire stays free. And become uh, stays and becomes an even freer state. And um, of course, for the people of the second district of Maine, that would mean instantaneously no income tax, no sales tax, school choice, uh, respect for your gun rights again, which which is eroding in the state of Maine. Never thought we would see that happen, but it is happening. I'm just planting seeds. You know, great ideas start from small seeds, and I think that a lot of folks in Maine are getting tired of getting kicked around. Maybe New Hampshire is the answer. All right. That's my rant. I want to share some news with you on this intermission episode. Uh, some great news. Defend the Guard has passed at the New Hampshire GOP convention. New, uh, Defend the Guard is now a platform plank of the New Hampshire Republican Party. So it's now an official position of the New Hampshire Republican Party that we should bring our National Guard troops home from wars that have not been properly declared by Congress. Excellent. I think New Hampshire is now the third state in America to pass such a platform plank in the Republican platform. Of course, 
the legislation itself has passed the New Hampshire House of Representatives and is currently pending in the New Hampshire Senate. They recently had a public hearing on this uh, in the New Hampshire Senate. So uh, I, I'm told there was good turnout and it was basically a bunch of, um, you know, lower, lower level kind of, you know, uh, you know, folks who would be kind of the on the ground folks serving in these wars saying, yes, we need to defend the guard legislation. And then a bunch of officers who would never be on the ground fighting and dying in these wars saying, well, actually, uh, what about our federal funding? What if they uh, cut our federal funds as if, uh, well, one, those are paper tiger threats. And two, are you really telling us that money is your only concern here when men and women are being sent off to fight and die for no reason except for the profits of the military industrial complex. Just declare the war already. Give the people a clear mission or a plane ride home. That's all we're asking for. So congratulations to all of those who've been involved in that effort to get it into the New Hampshire Republican platform and those who've been fighting to advance it in the New Hampshire legislature. I want to specifically shout out folks who've been guests on this program Derek Prue and Tom Mannion, Representative Tom Mannion. Um, they've done a lot of work on Defend the Guard. And in fact, we're going to be having a panel discussion at the Porcupine Freedom Festival this, uh, this upcoming June on Defend the Guard, along with so many other great things at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. In fact, that's a good, this is probably a good moment to remind you to get your tickets to the Porcupine Freedom Festival in Lancaster, New Hampshire at uh, Rogers Campground taking place this June. If you haven't gotten your tickets yet, they will sell out. Porkfest.com. That's pork with a C, not with a K, because it's porcupine, uh, not barbecue. Porkfest.com. Get your tickets. Uh, it does sell out, so don't wait. Um, so anyway, congratulations on the uh continued progress on defend the guard in fact i'm looking forward to one of my last acts in, in main republican politics we have our main republican convention coming up at the end of this month and i've already got the platform amendment drafted i am submitting defend the guard as a uh, submission for consideration to the platform plank of the main republican party we're going to fight for it there and uh maybe uh Maybe we'll continue making some progress on the issue. I also wanted to give a shout out and congratulations to everyone involved with the Merrimack Valley Porcupines uh, on their the 20th anniversary of the Merrimack Valley Porcupine uh, meetup. This is kind of one of the, the longest standing meetup groups in New Hampshire with the Free State Project. I think it's a real testament to the longevity and the sustainability of our project. Um, and uh, 20 years, 20 years of people gathering uh, to celebrate and promote freedom in the Merrimack Valley. So congratulations to everyone there. And also wanted to acknowledge that this past week, there was a great debate at Dartmouth College between uh, Spike Cohen, the former vice presidential candidate of the Libertarian Party, and David Hogg, who is uh, one of the prominent um, advocates for gun control in America. Uh, they had a great debate. Spike did wonderful. And of course, our very own friend, Lily Tang Williams, kind of stole the show with a question that she asked. Lily Tang Williams, if you don't know her, and we'll have to get her on the show sometime in the near future. Lily Tang Williams is, uh, well, she's running for Congress. I'll, I'll note that as a Republican in the state of New Hampshire. And um, she fled communist China uh, many years back. And of course, this is a big motivator for, for her being a huge proponent of freedom and liberty is she has experienced firsthand what it is like to live under a, a, uh, uh, a truly rep uh, repressive authoritarian regime in, in, in communist China. And... Um, so she just asked the question of David Hogg. She asked, can you guarantee that this government we live under will never become tyrannical? To which he responded, well, I can't guarantee that that any government won't become tyrannical. <laughs> and to which she declared, then the debate is over. I'm keeping my guns. Well, hell yeah, Lily. 
<laughs> wait, 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 a, wait to really just kind of drive the point home. And certainly as I head off to Augusta for the last day, and I know we're going to be fighting red flag gun confiscation uh, proposal, which is going to be in front of us today. Um, it, people really need, people don't always appreciate, and they should appreciate that um, even if you don't think the government in America is tyrannical now, which I personally think you have to be blind and and um, and propagandize not to see the tyranny that is forming around us and the cage that is being erected around us. But even if you don't see that, even if you don't agree with me that that's where we are, we can always go that way because power corrupts. Power tends to centralize. Power begets more power, and that's what we've been. That's what our whole system is built to resist against. But it is not. It is not a bat a war that we have been winning, at least not on the federal level. I do believe in the project of the states. I believe that we can fight back against tyranny on the state level and nullify federal tyrannies. I think that's one of the most uh, best things we can do. But uh, we always have to be on guard. The price of liberty is eternal vigilance, as Thomas Jefferson told us. And don't let them come for your guns. It was, we just celebrated Patriots Day recently. The, the anniversary, just this, this week, it was actually on tax day of all ironies. The celebration of those New Englanders who stood up to the British coming to take their guns at Lexington and Concord. And yet now the, these progressive regimes that are, are popping up around New England are coming to take our guns and we got to fight back through the legal process, through the legislative process um, with everything we, we can. So New Hampshire, this is the last fortress of freedom in New England. Let's not see her fall. Let's, Let's uh, let's build up our liberty homeland. Let's preserve the torch of liberty for the next generation, and let's make it burn brighter than ever. All right, everyone. This has been a very short intermission of the of the Porcupine Report. I will be back next week with a great guest, and in future weeks to come. So thank you so much for tuning in for this quick episode. Thanks for listening to me rant about. Uh, about liberty in Maine and New and New Hampshire and all the fights that are going on. I'm off to Augusta for my very last day in session of the Maine State Senate. Um, let's go fight for liberty. All right, everyone. Furthermore, my opinion is the Federal Reserve should be destroyed. <laughs>